Hey, you welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies and Palantir Technologies. In this video, we will be analyzing four articles to where the first one is titled, Is SoFi Stock a Buy? So we're going to be going over their latest news updates, upcoming catalysts, and their price targets. On top of that, we are going to go over some skeptical arguments against SoFi Technologies, and I'm going to destroy them one by one because a lot of the bearish arguments are terrible against SoFi Technologies because this is such a fundamentally strong company. After that, we're going to move on and talk about Palantir Technologies regarding their most recent AIP conference and how their artificial intelligence vision really paves the way for their future success. We're also going to talk about how Wall Street is slowly changing their opinions about Palantir Technologies and why it's such a good company. And then lastly, we're going to discuss how the company could surge by 500% in this one very important metric. So stay tuned for more videos on SoFi Technologies and Palantir Technologies. And if you want more videos on either of these companies, don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now. Comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you are new. Tell me what price targets you have for SoFi and Palantir over the next 12 months. And if you feel like it, go ahead and become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents. But with that being said, let's jump straight into today's stories. Starting off, we have SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol S. OFI. This is a fintech company or a financial technology company that essentially operates as a digital bank. They have a very compelling business model and SoFi has experienced immense momentum over the last few quarters. For instance, their revenue in the second quarter surged by around 37% year over year to bring in around $498 million, almost half a billion dollars in just one quarter. On top of that, they are also attracting a lot of customers and they're stealing market share away from larger banks. That's why their customer base is growing very rapidly, up 44% from Q2 of 2022 to reach that 6.2 million customer base. On top of their outstanding growth, even more strikingly is that they are doing this during uncertain macroeconomic times, meaning that once the volatility in the overall stock market and economy starts to be ironed out, this company is going to perform even better. Because if they can perform this well, despite volatile economic times, they are going to shine when things start to settle down. Management even went so far to raise their overall full year guidance for their revenue to now expect adjusted revenue to come in close to $2 billion at the midpoint, which is absolutely insane. We also have to remember that with government-backed student loans set to resume after a three-year hiatus, meaning that the government initiated a pause on these student loans, we're going to see a huge increase for SoFi Technologies student loan refinancing, and with this demand, this will increase their overall all financials, specifically in their student loan refinancing segment. Lastly, we also know that SoFi increased their overall deposits from $7.3 billion at the end of 2022 up to $12.7 billion as of June 30th, and that is a huge increase. On top of that, we saw SoFi expand their overall FDIC insurance coverage up to $2 million, and we also know that the company is set to become profitable. So those are all the things that you may already be aware of, but now let's talk about their future price projections for their overall share price. Currently, SoFi stock trades at $8.69, while very positive analysts believe this company could achieve $16 over the next 12 months, essentially almost doubling your money. But at the same time, we have very bearish negative critic analysts who are skeptical, saying that this company could fall to around $3 per share. Now, let me tell you why these bearish arguments are completely wrong. The first thing that bearish critical naysayers say about this company is they highlight their student loan originations, which have soared. The business has approved around $6.5 billion dollars, which is a huge amount of these types of loan applications, accounting for 79% of SoFi's total lending activity during this time. And many bears believe that this is a huge potential risk for this overall company. Because with all of these originations for personal loans at a time when the US economy remains very uncertain and volatile, what if people start to not pay back on their unsecured loans? And that would mean SoFi Technologies has to float the bill for this. However, this is absolutely ridiculous because SoFi has very strict underwriting policies and they don't just give personal loans to anyone. The majority of members that SoFi Technologies has have credit scores above 
of 740 on top of making over six figures. So these people are very unlikely to default and not pay back on their personal loans. On top of that, with such a high interest rate environment, personal loans creates an avenue for SoFi Technologies to make loads of money because people are using personal loans to pay off other high interest debt. And this means that as the prime rate goes up for interest rates and people's personal loans increase for their overall interest rates, it means that SoFi is making loads of money off of these loans. So I really don't understand the critics and naysayers saying that, oh, what if these people end up not paying back their loans? Yeah, but luckily, SoFi Technologies has great underwriting policies. They vet the people who they give loans to, and the people that they give loans to are very low risk, meaning that they are essentially guaranteed to pay back these loans. So again, this is not good argumentation from the bearish side. Next, they say that SoFi Technologies is not a profitable company, which is true, but if they just look at their overall projections, even management anticipates the company will become profitable on a gap basis, a generally accepted accounting principles basis in quarter four. So if they just look at the overall future projections, this is a very fundamentally strong institution. So both of these skeptical arguments hold absolutely no water logically when talking about personal loans and SoFi not becoming profitable. Now, to my surprise, the author of this article says that until he sees consistent profits, he won't invest into this company, which is a wise position to take. However, I think this company is so strong that I personally have invested into this company before they became profitable, because once they become profitable, that is going to ignite their overall share price. And since I'm a long-term investor, I want to get these shares as cheap as possible, so my long-term gains are even more impressive. So I am a little more risky than this author, even though I would classify myself as very risk averse. But overall, this company is doing phenomenal. We have a lot of upcoming catalysts for this company, such as the student loan moratorium, which has ended, as well as them becoming profitable in the fourth quarter. And management raised their guidance on this company to bring in around $2 billion. So this is very exciting. I anticipate that the share price will continuously increase over the next few quarters. And even Wall Street professionals have identified the overall positivity surrounding this company. For instance, a great number of investors on Wall Street as well as Main Street know that the company is crushing it in terms of their overall finances. We know that this company is fundamentally strong and that they are stealing overall market share from much larger banks to where it's positioning SoFi Technologies to eventually become one of those large blue chip banks, which is phenomenal. So if you get in on this company early, it's going to be very beneficial. Not to mention when we look at their overall price to sales ratio, it's only around 4%. And considering we can discount that against their current growth rate of over 30% on a compounding annual growth rate basis regarding their revenue, this means their PS ratio is literally a phenomenal deal to buy this company and purchase shares at right now. That's why SoFi Technology earns a B rating on a portfolio grader. Overall, I can't wait to see what this company makes of themselves in the future, and I will keep you updated on upcoming catalysts. Now let's move over and talk about Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR, and this company is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government agencies. On top of that, the company also specializes in artificial intelligence, which is what's leading their share price even higher lately. Palantir Technologies also recently had their AIP conference, AIP meaning their artificial intelligence platform, which they recently released. And this conference was held last week, and it showed the company's vision for the future of their artificial intelligence platforms and how it's resonating very positively with customers. A number of Wall Street firms even commented about this conference and said, and I quote, we were impressed at the range of industries across the board represented at the customer conference ranging from financial services, healthcare, transportation, logistics, manufacturing, software, and the overall services industry. And this came from none other than a five-star analyst named Daniel Ives from Wed Bush. On top of that, they also commented by saying that with these success slash case study stories, we learned that the Palantir offering isn't just a product base. It is a hand engineered solution for its customers exact pain points, meaning that this is not one system that works identically for all companies. Essentially, it adapts to that particular organization's needs, and that's what it focuses on. On a deeper level, Daniel Ives even commented by saying that AIP by Palantir Technology 
technologies is completely and fully integrated and it's extremely impressive and that's why Daniel Ives believes that this company is going to surge in their overall share price up to $25 even though right now it trades for around $15.46 meaning that this company has a substantial amount of upside ahead of it. In closing, Daniel Ives says overall we believe Palantir is on the golden path for its monetization story on the commercial side and is well positioned to capitalize on the strong commercial spending tailwinds in the second half of 2023 and throughout the year of 2024. Daniel Ives is an authority on this topic, but let's not just take his word for it. Let's look at what a Bank of America analyst also had to say, who commented on Palantir's recent AIP conference, where Palantir showed and answered questions about their AI strategy, to where this analyst said that Palantir's greater ability to scale and capture the increased demand, on top of being less capital intensive, Palantir Technologies overall is a phenomenal institution. Now clearly I paraphrased that, but overall you can see the bullishness from very highly respected analysts. So this is a phenomenal growth story for Palantir Technologies and I love how both SoFi Technologies and Palantir Technologies are showing their true colors because I've been reporting on this company for almost three years now and I've been banging the table to be smart on both of these companies because the future of these companies looks phenomenal. Phenomenal. But we're not done because we still have to talk about a specific metric in Palantir Technologies which is set to surge up to 500%. Palantir Technologies will be looking to display their strength in their next earnings release. And on that day, Palantir Technologies is anticipated to report earnings per share of $0.06, cents, which is very positive. This $0.06 cent EPS, which is very impressive because it's on the positive side, will represent a year-over-year -year growth of 500%. 100%. Talk about absolutely insane growth from this company, and investors should be extremely excited. Now, on the other hand, we have Zach's consensus estimates, which suggests that analysts are anticipating earnings per share for the full year coming in at 23 cents per share and revenue coming in at $2.2 billion, which would equate to a 283.33% increase for their earnings per share and a 16.25% increase regarding their their revenue CAGR. But again, both of these metrics are very impressive. Zax also has a system from rating stocks from one to five, one being the best, indicating a strong buying opportunity, and five would be a strong selling opportunity. And they rate Palantir Technologies as a hold rating coming in at a rating of three. This is mainly due to Palantir Technologies' very high forward PE ratio, which comes in at 67.49. That's very high because their industry average is around 23.84 for their forward P.E. ratio. But if we look at a more important metric in my estimation, which is their P.E.G. or PEG ratio, Palantir sits at around a 1.19 right now. And what's good about this is that the PEG ratio or P.E.G. ratio takes into account that specific company's growth rate for their overall earnings. And when we look and compare Palantir's PEG ratio to the industry's PEG ratio, they come in at a lower PEG ratio, which makes them a better buying opportunity because the overall technology and services space has a PEG ratio of 1.38, while Palantir has a 1.19, making Palantir a better buying opportunity considering their future growth rate. So don't let people lead you astray with all of these accounting ratios, which are taken out of context. When you look at these accounting ratios, you need to also look at the company's growth rate, which will offset these accounting ratios. And that's how you get more accurate predictions. Overall, this video explains why I really like SoFi Technologies and Palantir Technologies as long-term investments. However, I personally do not have a 5% initial portfolio allocation to either of these companies because I like to practice proper risk management. Even though I personally am an ETF mutual fund and index fund investor, I like VTI, SCHD, VOO, or SPY, as well as QQQM. Those are the ETFs that I really enjoy, and if I wanted to throw another one in there, I would do MTUM to get that momentum for my overall portfolio. But in the end, we can see that SoFi Technologies and Palantir Technologies are not only doing good now, but they're anticipated to do even better in the future, meaning that their overall share price is set to increase over the next few months and especially over the next few years. So I hope you're excited about these companies. And if you want more videos on SoFi Technologies or Palantir Technologies, please comment down below which of these companies you want me to report on more of and smash the like button so I can make more videos just like this one. With that being said, don't forget to go and annihilate the like button, subscribe if you are new, comment your thoughts down below, and I will see you in the next YT video.